We know the billionaires have always controlled most of business and their grip is getting tighter and tighter. So many small businesses have been wiped out in the past two years especially. It's comical how mom and pop restaurants had to close while McDonald's didn't even blink. To me, it's pretty obvious why they want people locked in their homes. The masses will only have access to social media sources that are controlled by the rich, whether it's television, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, radio, every single media source is in their power. A real small business or average Joe that's not in the club will be censored to death and not given any real exposure. So this is a little similar to the video on Amazon we did a few months back and it's hilarious. I've seen advertisements on TikTok, on TV, that Amazon is helping small businesses. Yeah, is that why if you list a product on Amazon, they take over half your profit? And if you're not in that club, you won't even sell products. It's like an algorithm on social media, you know, where TikTok controls who views your video, YouTube controls who views your video, same thing, Amazon controls who will buy your product. Outside of Amazon, there are many big companies most of you are familiar with and others that are still popping up. Zillow, the $3 billion real estate company, was buying up homes like crazy in the past two years, renovating them and then either selling them at a profit or renting them out. Now I've heard many stories of Zillow, of other companies, purchasing those homes for all cash over 25% of the listed sale price, much higher than any other bidder was willing to pay. Then they go and post these articles pretending like they're struggling and are stopping that behavior when in reality, these are the companies fulfilling the goals of the World Economic Forum. You will own nothing and be happy. Who do you think is going to own those houses? The rich 1% and they're going to rent them out to you. Zillow, those companies are the rich 1%, not really in disguise. Just like Zillow has the ability to control the real estate market and outprice the average person, Carvana is doing the same thing in the car market and certainly partially responsible for inflated used car prices. They will buy cars at or above market price, Kelly Blue Book value, and then sell them 20, 30% over what the customer should be paying if they went on like Craigslist or something. They're able to do this because of convenience. You know, just like Amazon, you go on there, you get something in a day or two, but if you go on a different website, it takes three, four, five days, you gotta shop around for prices. Carvana will pick up your car at your house, pay you on the spot. Same with purchasing. You click a button, buy the car online, and it's delivered straight to your door. There's no negotiating on either end. There's no hours and hours of searching, you know, on Craigslist and talking to people. Seemed ridiculous a few years ago, but not so much anymore with, you know what? <laughs> it's almost like they knew it was coming. Buying and selling cars in person will still get you better prices, thousands and thousands of dollars. And there are horror stories uh, about people who purchase cars from Carvana, you know, like barely being held together by mechanics, completely rusted out. Grocery delivery companies have been more and more popular. In New York City, they just launched a few different ones, but this Redditor explained how they operate. There's no way these businesses are sustainable. One of the biggest costs in the New York business is staff. Delivery services require more staff. Just can't see how it works economically. Look how much a food delivery costs now. It's already becoming prohibitively expensive. It's not. They operate with venture capital money until everyone else is driven out of business. Then once they have controlling market share, they IPO, they jack up prices, and the early investors get out before the general public realizes the company isn't profitable. Then they find some new disruptive tech startup and do it again. So these jerk offs have so much money they can control the market at competitive prices and push everyone else out. Then they just increase the price to where it needs to be after all of those small business owners have to close up shop. 
to me, it's getting crazy. You have Carewell for old people, diapers, capsule for medications, Chewy for pet supplies, and I'm sure there's at least half a dozen I don't even remember. What's the deal? Is everyone supposed to sit down at home and order from these companies while everyone else slowly loses their jobs and livelihood? Oh, I get Amazon deliveries every day. My Chewy order's coming tomorrow. My medications are coming Wednesday from Canada. That's exactly how the elite have created the biggest transfer of wealth in history. Gradually taking more and more control of markets, evil people working together to keep everything to themselves. They want to live in a castle while people are outside begging for bread. No such thing as equality in their minds. And you can't really start up a business if you want to. All of these big suppliers and distributors that are making products for Amazon, products for Chewy, all this stuff, they're not going to sell to you. And even if they did, the prices are going to be so high, you're going to get you know outpriced by all of those big businesses. So it's unfortunate, but people value convenience. And then, you know, when they're in their home all day getting fried by Wi-Fi, they don't seem to care. People don't really seem to care. So thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please drop a like on the video, leave me a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week. And be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Thanks again, guys. And I'll see you for tomorrow.